What up? I'm Linus, uh, known as Linus and his camera on, ew, Linus, Linus and his camera online. And today I'm gonna try to jumpstart me back into YouTube by showing you my film camera collection, my workspace, and my developing area. I get a lot of questions about this every week, so I thought I'd just show you guys. Okay, so before we go into my room, which is also my office and workspace, I'm gonna show you this little setup I have out here. I have uh, four fracture prints of some of my 120 work. Um, this was taken in Spain. This was taken at the Valley of Fire in Nevada. This is my friend Nelson for a set that I call Roadside Assistance. And this is my friend Kaylin for a set that I call Film Studies. If you follow me, you've probably seen me talk about Fracture before, but I've done some videography work for them and they print directly onto glass. There's no paper at all. And so I frequently print on them because I love their products and what they stand for. So I love that a lot. And right below that, I have a couple cameras and film photo books. Um, I've collected a lot of these just at like <laughs> random random thrift stores and like bookstores and stuff and a lot of my inspiration for photography that you guys have seen has either come from old movies, old music, or old photo books. Next up though, I have these cameras starting with this one here, this Polaroid One Step. This is actually my first film camera I ever got. I got it when I was like 16 from my aunt and uncle. They said that they used to have one just like it and I had no idea how to use it. So I kind of held on to it for a couple years until I got into film photography and, and then I started collecting Polaroids. So actually, um, I have quite a big collection of Polaroids now because that was what I was originally into. So all three of these cameras right here, I've never used. This is a Kodak number zero, believe it or not, and it shoots 120 film, but part of the camera is missing. So clearly the film would get exposed. Next up, I've got a Bell & Howell sundial. Um, I've never used this either, but it's a pretty cool camera, so I just leave it out. And then lastly, um, I have an Instamatic 104 Kodak camera. I've never used that either, and that's because that film format's dead. And then up here, I've got one of my Polaroid SX-70s. I love these cameras a lot. Uh, they're my favorite of the Polaroid series, but this one in particular um, is just for show. Its motors do not work, so I'm gonna either have to get it serviced or just leave it alone. I've got two others that I use more frequently anyway. Occasionally, I'll get asked questions about this camera wall that I have and what cameras I actually use and what cameras are just for show. So I'm just gonna show you the entirety of it. Let's do it. On the bottom, I have two Polaroid 600s. I just love how these look and I love the photos that they take, so they're just part of my Polaroid collection. Next on my bottom shelf, I have a Beauty Super 2 rangefinder. I think this is from like the mid 50s. This is one of the first film cameras I actually ever used. I brought this with me to Spain and honestly, I wish I didn't. It was before I really understood how rangefinders worked. If you guys don't know how rangefinders work, there's a side viewfinder here with a split image focusing system. I'll kind of show you how it works by doing it with the video right now. Pretty much you focus with the lens and inside of the viewfinder, the image eventually lands back on top of itself and that indicates whether or not it's in focus. But on this particular camera, it's so dim that I, I couldn't tell. I was focusing completely based on the distance that it shows on the lens. Otherwise, it's a nice little camera. The lens is a little bit soft, so I don't think I'll use it very frequently, but it's a nice reminder of that first time I ever used a rangefinder. Next up, I have a kind of mix match part of my shelf here. There's a lot of expired boxes of film on this shelf. It's just the boxes though. They're boxes that I might never see again, so I've kept them. And then also my 3D camera collection. I've got a Nimslo here and an Ashika N8000. I don't use these cameras as frequently as I'd like, but whenever I do bring them out, I think, why haven't I been using these more frequently? And I think actually we're using them in this video right now. Now we're gonna start getting into medium format. The Mamiya RB67. This was my first medium format camera I ever used. This specific one was not though. I actually got this off of Facebook Marketplace for $125 with four film backs and I think 40 rolls of expired film. Um, and this specific RB was a backup RB for a guy um, who shot weddings with them and he had never used it once. So I, was, I'm, I think I'm the first person who's ever used this camera. It's pretty crazy. Next up, I have a TLR, which is a twin lens reflex medium format camera. They shoot six by six, so the images are all square. This is a Graflex 22. I think it's from the mid 50s as well. And it's my only twin lens reflex medium format camera I have. 
I got it around the same time as I got the RB, but I didn't really use it that much. I, I think I've used it maybe two or three times. Next up, I've got an Intrepid camera. It's a four x five, it's their Mark IV model, and um, they loaned it to me to test out shooting four x five. I'm looking forward to really diving into that next week and uh, I'm also gonna be developing it all by myself as well. So I'm really excited to give this thing a go. It's a step up from medium format size wise. The negatives are four by five inches. So the amount of detail you can get per negative is just kind of mind blowing. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm stoked to try that out. Um, so I, I've added it to my shelf as a reminder to like, hey, go shoot with it now before they get mad at you. <laughs> this right here is the Pentax 6x7. It's pretty much the only camera I use these days for my conceptual work and when I travel. It can rest on a camera strap around my hip pretty comfortably so I can climb up stuff like trees and shoot with it down. It's the most efficient and effective way for me to shoot medium format film. I have two Pentax 6x7s. This is not the one that I use. The one that I use is packed away right now in my traveling case. Um, but this is the one that I took with me to Kodak and it kind of just sits up there until I have a chance to get this lens fixed. All right, let's continue on. Next up, we have another one of my Polaroid SX-70s, but this one is the Sonar. Um, my friend Dan Rubin was actually the one who told me this, but this is the first camera that ever had autofocus. It's pretty cool. It functions just like any other SX-70, but it has autofocus, so that's pretty pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and move into my developing space now. Okay, so this is where I develop all my film. I've got my temperature control system right here. I've got my C41 chemicals cooked up right there. And, and then over there, I've got some slide film chemicals and black and white chemicals and just other storage stuff. I love developing in here. Usually I'll do a live stream. I'm sure some of you guys have seen those. So this is my uh, developing space. All right, so let's say we just developed a roll of film. I've got it clipped and I wanna look at it. Uh, I'll take it back here behind my door and I have this whole setup back here where I have a light table mounted so I can just turn it on and I've got this app here called Lab Box and it inverts everything to color. You'll see like a screen recording on the screen, but pretty much you can just come down here and it'll convert everything to color. And oh, that's fucking cool as shit. I need, a, I need to scan that. This is actually a roll of film I shot at Kodak's headquarters that I forgot about. But anyway, the rest of this shelf here is just um, places to charge all of my equipment for my digital work that I do for clients, uh, a place to store things like light meters and cable releases. Uh, and then I also have a couple film cameras here too. I've got my one point and shoot. It's a Nikon L35 AF. I use this occasionally, but it's, it's really, really good. Uh, and then here I've got a Kodak Extra Light 10. It's a 110 film camera. Lomography just started producing a ton of 110 films, so I'm waiting for some of that to come in so I can shoot it. And then lastly, of the important stuff on here is I've got a Rito 3D film camera. It's the new kickstarted 3D film camera on the market. They sent me one to review, and sadly, it broke before I got to review it. So I'm trying to figure that out. It might be an easy fix, but <laughs> that's that. I love this part of my room because it keeps all of my cords and charging equipment out of the way on the wall and behind a door. So it, it kind of just like chills back here and that's been super efficient. I, I used to have to take like my, my single chargers for my DSLR batteries and plug it in and wait for it to charge, uh, take that battery out and plug the next one in. So it's great to have everything in one place just charging at once. So now we've let our film dry back here in front of the light table and we want to scan it. So we'll come over to my desk area and this is where I've got my scanner. I have an Epson V550 and since I let it hang to dry, it's usually perfectly straight. So I can just open up my scanner, take a microfiber cloth and clean off the glass and then lay my film that dried hanging directly on the glass since it's already flat. And then, you know, just scan. Before I get into my whole scanning process, I'm just gonna stop there. I've got a video on my scanning process coming out in the next week or so. But that's a quick slash not that quick look at my camera collection, my dark room, and my workspace. Uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed this style of video. I'm still trying to find my style, I guess. And I've never done a video this long. So please let me know what you think in the comments and ask any questions if you have them. I'm looking forward to making more videos. I've got quite a few planned videos for my trip up to New York City in the next couple weeks. So you'll be seeing a lot more stuff from me. I'm Linus from Linus and His Camera and uh, bye. <laughs>